Good day, strategy gamers. Welcome back to episode seven of our War in the East 2 um, campaign playthrough of Stalingrad to Berlin, playing as the Soviets. In this episode, we're going to finish up the second half of turn four uh, by doing the ground movement phase from uh, this pocket near Moscow and Smolensk, and we'll continue working our way south down our front lines to continue executing all of our tactics and movements for our ground units until the end of the turn. Then at the end of the turn, we're actually going to take a look and introduce to the viewers the um, some of the various info screens that are available, very specifically the metric screen. Um, and we're going to take a look at some of the data that the game provides you, the user, to see at a a high level uh, how the game is progressing and how your forces are faring. Um, so that's what we'll close the episode off with. And then in episode eight, we will begin turn five of the campaign. So let's dive right into it. And where we left off in the last episode was we had worked south from the north of Leningrad, executing our movement phase over here. We brought in the third shock army, the 39th army, uh, to try to reinforce this line, cut off this panzer unit to try to take away its initiative of being aggressive behind our lines. Now we're kind of left over with moving here along the front of more actions to be done. And at the very south, nearest to Smolensk, we continue to have some supply issues for these units, which really is a combination both of the terrain and the fact of their distance to any type of logistics or supply line, such as this rail, or these roads, or these rails over here. Um, and secondly, because when moving the 39th, and I think it was specifically the 53rd Army, um, over to this front line, we use the rail line to do so. And just because you're moving units on the rails doesn't necessarily mean that you suddenly have more trains, right? This game accurately simulates, well, if you've got a full train load worth of troops moving from east to west to this front line along these rail lines, if they're full of troops, they can't be full of ammunition and food. Um, so it does accurately simulate that. I'm hoping that the supply situation here with these units becomes greatly improved in the next couple of turns as we've now opened up this line in this pocket um, for this railroad to hopefully bring in supplies. Because previous to even this turn, uh, the nearest supply line would have come here from this rail line even further north. And that's just a long way for supplies to travel, especially when you're going through swamp and heavy woods. Right, terrain is not to our benefit in terms of getting supplies here. I'm actually rather happy by the fact that these units, although they are out of supply, they continue to entertain so many German divisions to maintain this front. Um, so we are going to stay very conservative and none of these units will move. When we look over here at the 41st Army, we see these units in particular have gotten some supply, but they're still not really in a great position to um, make any notable advances. So we're not going to push forward with any of these units. But what we will do is take um, this stack here and actually start... Oh, I grabbed the wrong unit, so we're going to have to correct that mistake I just had. We're going to take the 6th Stalin, and we'll move that to this hex here. And then we'll take the 47th Mechanized and move that up. And then we will also move up the 93rd rifle. And I see here that actually the HQ we can bring up closer to our front line as well. So right now it's just a little further away. We managed to um, continue holding these German units here in these pockets. So we'll continue to do so. Um, we're going to take this 114th rifle brigade... Oh, and we're actually going to leave it because we we need this unit to restore some of its combat preparation points and its fatigue is rather high. Um, so we're just going to let it sit in that hex right there because by being off of the front line, it's going to recover more quickly. What we will do instead is this particular unit, the 25th Motorized German Division. It is severely out of supply 
So we're actually going to take our units here and we're going to try to finish that off. And they held. So I say to myself, maybe we should have waited. But that's that's just another learning opportunity there. Okay. So they they managed to hold uh that line. So what we will do now is we're actually going to bring down some reinforcements because what we really want to do is make sure that these German forces here can't break north and these forces can't break south. Right? We want to keep them held in this pocket. And we're going to look for some other units that we can also move up to, to help with that. So I think we're also going to take this first guards unit and move this over here. I don't know that any of my units have enough movement points there to move into that hex. Um, but because we're now um, exerting a bit of a, a zone of control here, it should cost them more movement points, making it very difficult to not only move, but also attack this mechanized core. And in a way, we'd almost be hopeful that they do advance, because then it gives us an opportunity to possi possibly cut off more units. Oh, I spoke too soon. We can take this second guard's cavalry, and we're going to put this right in between there. Right, so now they, they just don't stand a chance of getting out of that pocket, which is good news for us. And what we can do is, over here, we had moved up into position this 29th army. We're going to then use this to start building out a bit of a front here. So we'll move these units. We'll get all of these in position. So that way we can, ten can continue holding this line. We have this fifth army, which is actually quite a ways from its headquarters. So I think we were planning on moving the fifth army south. Um, so that, that's fine. That's fair enough. We're going to, for now, take this particular unit and, and move it to reinforce this line. And we will also take feel like we should try to get some more help in this particular hex because that's a bit of an easier breakthrough for them if they try it. So we'll take the 110th Rifle Division and we'll move this north. And then we will take the 50th Rifle Division and move that up. We also have this armor unit here, which we will... I think we'll actually see if we can't do a bit of an attack here on this particular hex. So we have three to one. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can't get a victory. Okay, so we forced them both to both of those units to retreat. We did take some losses, um, but I think it was a good win in the end. We're going to leave that hex empty, I think. But we will now move up these units here. We're going to do the same thing, these three. Okay. So again, we're continuing to build out our front line. I'm tempted to, to move into that hex, but this, this feels like a trap, right? It's the 5th Panzer, 2nd Panzer. And then we have the SS Panzer Grand... Panzer Grenadier Division, as well as three infantry divisions. Yeah, that's just asking for trouble by moving to that hex. So first we're going to try to push them back on the north and south fronts before we move into that. So what we'll do instead is we have the 293rd Infantry Division that looks like it's having some supply issues. We'll see if there's not an opportunity to push this unit back. But it appears that it's just a one-to-one -one in terms of the math, so we're going to leave that be. We got distracted moving down our line. That can happen sometimes when you're having fun with this. So we need to refocus our attention back to the 5th Army and how we need to move it down south. Actually, I remember what our intent was now. This, this has taken me a moment, but I recall now. Our intent was to take the 5th Army, and we actually wanted to move it over here to this eastern front to help plug this gap. Um, where these panzer units had broken out. But we 
did not want to use our um, our rail line because we did not want to again uh, exasperate the supply issue that we're facing here in the south. So I think what we'll do is continue our movement to that front line. And we'll do so by moving them south through here. And then this keeps them in contact with their other unit that they were working with. So we move all of these up. Very good. And then next turn we should be able to, if we can collapse this pocket next turn, it'll make it easier than to move just in a due line um, heading west. We're not going to push the units too far so we don't cause any fatigue issues or combat preparation issues. Um, so it, it probably will take us a good three turns to get them into a position where they can help with this front line. Um, but even if we use the rail line, we're talking at least two turns to get them up to the front. So I, I think this is going to be okay. Now we can continue our path down south to the line, and we'll look for some more opportunities to see where we might have a chance to break out somewhere. Let's just see how the math looks here. That's 10 to 6. So that's not so great. So I think we'll leave that be. We take these units, we get 16 to 6. That's against the 97th Jaeger Division. I think we'll go ahead and we'll press that. Okay, good decision. We routed them. That's excellent news. So a route is always preferred to a retreat because that, that really forces the unit back, disables them, and it's not something where just the next turn they can move them back to the front line. Um, so that was a very good outcome for us. Continuing to move west to east here along this front, um, we haven't had too many chances here for opportunities to advance. So we'll just check a few that look promising, but otherwise we're just going to stay in this holding pattern. We might be able to do something here. We can, but would it not be better to attack here right in the center of this road? That is only a two to one advantage, though. What do we have back here? Yeah, as you see, we have this rifle division. We can move up and help. So I think we'll do that. And then we have a 14 to 5. It's pretty much 3 to 1. And it's a Luftwaffe field division, so they're not going to be sitting there with a bunch of armor or guns available. So we're going to go ahead and do a deliver attack. And they were retreated. We did lose 13 armored fighting vehicles, though, which seems a little high. Okay, so we've pushed them back there. Um, and again, it's, it's just all about positioning of these hexes. So if we can next turn move two, two units into this vacated hex, we can then force them to continue defending then these two hex, right, and continue to expand outward by stretching their line. Because we have, across this whole front, a bit of a numerical advantage, but we do not have enough of an advantage to attack a fixed position. Um, so that's why it's been a little slow here, um, moving down some of these units. We have another example, though, where we have this 356 that was sitting in reserve on the HQ. So we're going to go ahead and move that south, and we will then use these two units to attack here and they were retreated excellent news excellent we can then move up this ninth guards i wonder yeah it's not going to be worth continuing on there do we have enough to press here again nope nope we need to we need to hold a little bit but next turn right we kind of face the we force them into a similar situation of do they now split this heck or excuse me, split this stack and have one of the infantry divisions defend their line here so we can't break through. Um, so this, this is all the type of uh, movement that we want along the front line, not taking heavy casualties, throwing human waves at the front, 
um, simply trying to advance and create little pockets we can push through. I don't know if we've checked this one yet, but I think we might have some luck here. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty close to a three to one. So what we'll do is we're going to take And I have enough combat preparation there for this to work. Yeah, we'll move this unit over. And, yep, here we have a much better chance. And they're forced to retreat. Wow, those... We're, we're taking a number of armored fighting vehicle losses, and I just want to take a look at that real quick. So... We go here, we see we lost seven medium tanks. And I know we're attacking a fixed position, but we, we have 50,000 men against 3,500 men. And we have armor and 1,000 guns to break through. So they that, that really stresses the defender's advantage when they're in this fortified position, right? And when we look at the ground combat, I think I'm going to take my filter off here. So we see that it's these 75 millimeter Pac-40 anti-tank guns that probably did in all of those T-34s because you see that they had <laughs> they they had seven 75 millimeter Pac-40 anti-tank guns and guess what they had an AP which is armor piercing hit on seven different occasions against us well seven armor piercing hits equals seven destroyed tanks um Sometimes it might take more than just one, um, but they also had, so these indicate if the unit was destroyed, dis damaged, or disabled, so I, I should really specify here. Um, so one of them destroyed the tank, four of them damaged them to the point to where they really uh, may not have been combat effective. If we take off that filter, then I'm curious if we can try to ascertain what took out the other units um it could very well be that some of them were he hits um because it, for some of these weapons port weapons platforms an he shell may be enough to be effective against say the the side of a t-34 maybe a 75 millimeter that that still seems like a bit of a stretch though anyways we're getting into the weeds a little there and we have the rest of the turn to finish up so we'll continue on uh, looking for more opportunities to press our advantage. And here we have this tank core that has somehow found itself out of supply, and I'm assuming that it's running into some difficulty due to its distance from its HQ unit. So we're going to reposition the HQ unit to try to be a little more equally spread between the two forces. And we'll see if we can't press through and, and create some more pockets here that they're forced to respond to. So we're, we don't have great odds, but we're going to try with the 143rd Rifle Division. And we routed them, actually, which is a fantastic result. But it wasn't many men, just 1,700 defending there. And then I think we can probably achieve something similar here. That's only 2 to 1 odds. That's not that great. So what I'm debating now is we might actually take our cavalry core here and, and force them to respond a little bit. Um, to, to make them either expand their front or let us get in on their sides and, and create a wider, wider area of attack. This, this seems like another golden opportunity a unit that's in difficult supply, and we have at least four to one odds. So they route it, so they're not going to be coming back anytime soon. Excellent news, excellent news. And then here, I actually think they pulled back out of this hex in the last turn. So we're going to move this unit up, and then we can do this a, a bit of a cascade here with these others. And I think... Last turn, if you remember, we actually had some success along this line, doing the exact same thing that we've been doing north of here. 
Um, so that this is going quite well. This tank core might be able to press an advantage. That's two to one. Perhaps there's enough. It's also two to one. So which which might be better to to go for? Um, I think what I should have done is first consider what can we move up here. So let's. By the way, I should have mentioned this. I'm sorry. You see these units on the map, right? Um, these are construction brigades. Um, and pretty much they're support units that exist on map that can be used to repair rail damage. Um, so that's why this unit here is moved up as it has come to repair the damage that is likely on this rail line. Anyways, I, I got ahead of myself. Now that we have these units moved up, we're going to do an overwhelming attack and hopefully route them, which we did. And it looks like we captured a depot there, which is equally good news. We just don't seem to have enough to make it down there. I could technically move the 17th tank core here, but I, I in a lot of ways, I want to kind of preserve its... Can I do it? I, I was thinking about preserving its movement points to try to recover combat preparation uh, for future attacks. You see, now it's just down to nine, and its fatigue is really getting high. And what we're going to have to do now is actually split this stack uh, to make sure they can't just push through now that we've vacated that hex. Let's see if we can't break through here. No, that's, that's not good enough odds. But maybe if we continue moving up our line, we'll be able to here. What have I done? Oh, we, we don't. We're not in a position where we can continue attacking with those. But here we can. So let's do this. Alright, so we routed that division. Good, good. Don't have enough to advance, but that's fine. Here, obviously we'd push them back as well. We don't have nearly enough strength to attack. This. This is only 3,800 men holding here. That's actually a little alarming. Um, it's right at the corner of our line, and it's sitting next to the 8th Panzer Division. Um, so hopefully they're not in a position where they can feel they can advance or press an advantage there. Here we've got another opportunity, I think, with this Luftwaffe Field Division. Now I, I need to look into this, but I feel like there should be some way that we can identify. Um, so the weather simulations that happen in this game, it also simulates, for example, the, the benefits of, well, it's deep winter in Russia. It doesn't matter necessarily that there's a river there because it's frozen with three feet of ice and you can just launch an attack across it. Um, I, I, I'll have to research to see if there's a way we can display that on map to see you know what, it's gotten cold enough, December's late enough into the winter for that to freeze over. Um, I'm going to go and just assume that if it's anything like the weather here in Minnesota, that uh, in December that has frozen over, and we have 17 to, to 1.5 odds, so I'm, I'm going to take that. And we routed them, as would probably be expected. We don't quite have enough movement to advance, which is fair enough. Um, let's see if we can't also... Don't have enough of an advantage to really push our luck there. We had crossed over here, I think it was in the previous turn, again pressing these little pockets. We're going to go after the first Luftwaffe division here, and we'll try to route them as well. They held... And it looks like because they were supported by this Italian Mountain Division is the reason that they held. Which is interesting, because that, that would have been nice to break through that pocket. There's an air base here too that I'm really hoping we can capture and, and even more further south on this line. Not seeing too many other places for 
in attack, but we have these two units here. And I actually think we'll move them up and see if we can't do this attack again. They held once more, my goodness. Wow. Very interesting. I don't think we have enough to do it. Yeah, it's that we've just weakened ourselves so much going after that. So we, we have to hold now. Very well. Um, we will bring up this unit, though, to try to help reinforce, I think... I think we're best to do that probably down here kind of at the, the corner of our front because that's going to help us pivot in one direction or another do we have enough to have any effect here no okay very well moving on moving on we have some armor units here that had started to break through in the previous turn and then we have this fourth guard as well that the, this Panzer Division is in an awfully good defensive position, so I don't know there's much we're going to be able to do here. So we're just going to move up them to defend this line. But I think what we will do is move up this Rifle Corps, and we're going to do a very aggressive push here against this unit. They've routed, lost 10,000 men. This is a Romanian division, it looks like. So that was a good result for us. And I think we're going to take this unit here. And we're just going to start pushing this line forward. Very good. Not quite enough of an advantage there. I think what we will do... We will actually move up here all the way. And I'm going to bring these two units in. And we're going to move up our HQ unit here. Because what I want is to kind of force them into a decision of... You know, if we can break through these units, we're, we're clear running south. So are you going to use the 6th Panzer, Panzer Division to counter or to relocate? Or are you just going to let us do that? So I think we'll attack with this unit. And they retreat it. Okay, excellent. More and more good news, everyone. More and more good news. Is it worth? Let's do it. Oh, no. Might have a bit of a delay there. Okay. And I don't think we've attacked here yet, have we? We have not. So let's... Or have we? I think we have, actually. Okay. Continuing down the line, we're now getting to the portion of the front that is Stalingrad. Um, I've got this unit up here, which looks like it probably came in from the reserves. There's a couple, actually. So we're going to start moving these units just down. We're not going to get them close enough this turn to do anything, but that's fine. We just want to get them a little closer to the front right now. And then once they are down there, we'll start assigning them to various armies to, to be part of. This it actually looks like it is part of the Second Guards army. Okay, so we're, we're going to bring up the Second Guards then. Start getting ourselves in a position. What I think I have to do is... The second guards. I think I need to attach it to what is this? The southwest front. So let's see if we can figure that out. So right now it's Stavka. We want to pick a new HQ and we want the southwest front. Very good. So that seems to have done it. So that is how you change which higher HQ a HQ belongs to. Look at all of this learning we have going on. We're going to spend some time just 
continuing to organize our front line here because we've got some opportunities like you see here we had moved up this rifle division as we tried to press the attack into Stalingrad but really I want this rifle division to be part of the front line that we've built I don't want it to be one of the units attacking Stalingrad when the army that it belongs to is actually um, defending this line and instead what we'll do is we'll swap out that place for units that are part of the 65th army by moving them into position here. See? Very good. And then we're going to continue advancing some of these other units. All right. And then we're, we're holding our line here, which is good. But let's now start looking at where we might have an opportunity to break through this line. So let's attack there. They have retreated, so that was a nice victory right off the bat. Wonder if we have enough here. It's just two to one. Hmm. I'm actually going to go for this one. They held. Okay, that, that's fine. I knew that one was going to be a bit of a risk, but I was excited to maybe capture that um, airbase that is currently there and then start to surround this 23rd Panzer Division where they had to either sacrifice themselves by holding the line or retreating, um, which is fine. We'll, we'll handle that in another turn. Let's then take these two units and see if it's enough to press here. That unit is very low supply. Good. Okay, so they have retreated. So I think what we will do is we're actually just going to hold that line. We're not going to advance there. This fourth tank corps, we're going to see if we can't push out this unit. They have retreated, so that was another victory for us. And then don't quite have enough here, so we're going to move up this unit. And we'll use that to push back the 11th Infantry Division. Very good. So you see, now we can advance this line of attack. And do we have enough to push here? We're going to do it. It's at least two to one. And it looks like they retreated, and we have now captured that supply depot, which is immensely helpful to us. So we'll move up some of these units. So, wow, we... They are having their own supply issues here. Very interesting. I think what we'll also do is, hmm, I might just hold that unit kind of here in reserve, which is kind of the, this is kind of the linchpin between these two fronts because we don't quite have enough units to fill the line entirely, which is okay. That's, that's not necessarily a problem. If you remember over here, we do have some units that were moving west, but I think I'm getting ahead of myself because we need to look to our south to see what's happening there too. So, so back up here to the line. Um, we'll do this little segment, and then we'll go on to Stalingrad, and then we'll continue south. So where do we have opportunity to push here? This seems like an easy one. So they were routed. They're gone. And... Let's see. This seems like another easy one. They have also routed. We'll now attack here. They have routed. So that is three straight battles, three straight routes. We really can't ask for more than that. I made a mi mistake there. I wanted this unit to go here, but that's okay. And now what we can do is we can move these units down to bring up our forward line. Next turn, we'll see if we don't have enough to actually make an attack here on the 294th. And we're going to leave these units to kind of build out this defensive line because with zone controls, etc., and the recon this provides, we can, we can then see, and they're going to have to go quite a ways around or bring quite a few forces to try to press through on this side. So back to Stalingrad and our attack on it. 
by far their strongest defensive positions continue to be in the northeast of the city. It's uh, here in the west that I think we have some opportunities to really attack. So we're, we're going to see if we can't take out this little pocket here. And they have surrendered. Okay. So those, those units are not a concern anymore. And now if we take this, we should be able to do the same here. They have also surrendered. Okay. Good news. Oh boy, do we... I don't think we want to advance that there, do we? No, I don't think so. I think it's going to be better if instead... If instead we say, okay, let's take these. What type of attack can we get? I don't want this armor to attack, I just want these two. They held. Okay, we maybe should have waited a little longer there. That's understandable. Let's see if we can't get any type of luck against these security forces. I think we will. Yep. And we took a depot as well, worth the supplies. And that that is going to be more harmful to them than pretty much anything else. Very good. So we continue to just kind of squeeze that shut a little. We'll bring up some of these units to help reinforce... So it's just a little harder for them to try any type of breakout. But at this point, it's it's past breakout. They they would not stand any chance of breaking out of this pocket at this point. We do have this unit here, but yeah, we we can move that down. It's fine. And then we have some more opportunity to move these units up. I think it's how many do we have? We have three there. I think we might just let these units here in the rear just kind of rest, actually. Okay, so that's gone well. We will move up the 13th. No, we not. I'm curious why we can't move to that. That hex. Interesting. You know, just, just to see, this is 24. What does that look like? Yeah, it's just one-to-one. -one. I don't think there's going to be anywhere else that would even have that good of odds. Well, that that's better than one-to-one. -one. And what do we have here? Okay. So, when they start running into supply issues, this might be one of the first ones we do go after. There's also the opportunity for this, which is two-to-one. Hmm. We're gonna hold off. Uh, we we can play a bit of a waiting game. They they haven't really started to run terribly low on supplies yet, so we can wait a little bit. So we'll we'll let that be, and now we're going to move our attention further south. Um, and this is what I'm wondering: what's next here? So these units are gonna to start to run in a bit of a supply issue as they get so far away from the lines of supply. So really what we need to happen is we need to take these hexes to then get this rail line active, repaired, etc. So that way supplies can flow along this rail line and reinforce these guys. If we move them in a straight line north to try to intercept, we would simply find ourselves in a position where they ran out of supply and they were easily, easily um, um, countered. So what we're going to do is start moving these units to take this rail line and we'll start building a bit of a position around that right so I, I think this is some good progress here and then we can take this we just need one more here okay so we now control this control, excuse me, this rail line moving north south, which should help alleviate supply issues. And 
Now with our other forces, we need to continue our advance. Okay, so here we've actually possibly run into some opposition. And there are two Romanian units. I think what we'll do is we'll move that there, and this will then slowly start to give them supply issues as well. Okay, very good. Let's now move up here. Right, so we've now taken these key routes. We're just going to continue this advance here along this line. All of this is with the eye of um, Krasnodar and Mykop, and really trying to move this force east to west to cut them off. Um, and we'll advance from the south here, but I don't know that these forces alone will be enough to besiege those cities, unless they simply withdraw. Um, in which case there would not be a, a fight to be had. That's fine too. If they want to withdraw, that's fine too. I'll bring just a few more units down here to take that. We really need to move up that HQ to get back into contact here. Same thing here. Okay, good. That HQ unit is... Oh, it's not necessarily the HQ, it's that it's not assigned to this army. So we need to change that. It's now been assigned to the 58th army, which is good. Continue moving these up. And same thing here, this needs to be assigned to one of these armies. Very good. Very good. Okay, so I think that deals with those. And in light of those supply conversations we're having, um, we're going to continue moving these units. Not in a terribly aggressive fashion, but more so just to continue building out our front line here. All right, so... I'm going to just continue building a bit of a line uh, where they would not be able to easily, at least, advance against. Continue moving those up. Move our HQ unit a little closer there. I think we will take this town here with that cavalry unit. In this unit, we're just going to move back one just to try to force them to move through our zone of control a little further if they did want to try to knock out this unit. So that's fine there. And then here, I think we'll just leave that. This is just kind of that, yeah, last resort. Let's try to cut them off with something. Continue to move along the front here. Wonder, let's give that a try. We shattered them. My goodness. All right, so they they are just gone. Oh no. <laughs> but they had friends. So we've we've brought up some friends of our own. So now we have this NKVD division and the 242nd Mountain Division. If memory serves correctly, I feel pretty sure about this, but the NKVD, for those who aren't aware, um, later evolved into... Uh, what, of course, most are familiar with today, the KGB. Um, this, that was the force previous to the KGB. Moving some of these units, even though I now recognize that they weren't necessarily in a good supply situation, so we're just... We've hurt them probably by moving these units up. Their supplies are just horribly low, and I should have seen that. Over here, I think we'll... Continue advancing some of these units. To try to put pressure on my cop. If 
feel like I'm not pronouncing that correctly too, so I might have to do some research there. Okay, so those have all moved up. And you, we will continue moving towards Krasnodor. Oh, I'm, I'm encouraged we move that far there on that turn without running into any opposition. I think that's a very good sign. Oh, and we captured the Krasnodor Depot. Very good. Very good news indeed. I think we'll move up there. Move up here. So Krasnodor has already fallen. What great news. So we'll continue our advance along this side. And we've got another city there. Look at this. Look at this great news. We're gonna move up our HQ unit though. And we'll do the same with this HQ unit. And here. And here. Oh my, we're we're way out here. Um hmm. I think we'll move it here with the anticipation of us being able to cut across my cup once we come into Ooh, that yeah, was a bit of a mistake that we didn't have that HQ and it followed them across the mountains, but yeah. Very well. All right. That wraps up our ground movement phase. Um, I know I said we are going to look at the metrics screen, but looking at the time of the episode, I think we will actually save that for uh, episode um, eight. And what we'll end up doing is just going through all of the intern cycles here. So just out of paranoia, we'll make sure the AI is doing the depot work. And then we will intern and close out the episode. So these are the supply missions that are currently going through. Just making sure that a unit here and there has um, enough supplies. I, I still wish, though, they wouldn't do this. And I, I should have researched how to stop it because of the weather. They, look at that. They, they lost eight, eight aircraft. Um, they're, you're flying in a blizzard. Of course you're going to lose eight aircraft trying to drop cargo from a plane. Uh, but anyways, neither here nor there. Halfway done now with the Germans' AI logistics phase. And then after this, of course, it will move on to the Germans air execution phase. And the Germans are going to find, because they come second to us in the turn, they will find that they have the same weather we did. Um, so I'm hopeful that that means... Well, actually, if I'm honest, I'm hopeful that means they're idiots and they go run a bunch of air operation missions and lose all of their airframes. But I don't think we'll be so lucky. Um, they'll, they'll likely do the same thing we did and kind of set back a little during that phase. So still going through um, the various stages. The theater boxes, I can't remember if we touched on these in the previous episode. Uh, the work we had done in the previous two turns of the game in the theater boxes had proved fruitful, and we now find ourselves with the um, Northern Front, the Caucasus Front, and the Far East um, theater boxes all having in themselves in a pretty good supply situation in terms of um, men and fighting equipment to fight the war there. Here we're in the AI turn for air execution. We'll see what, if anything, happens. I'm betting this just stays at zero sorties the whole way through. Yep, one, one fourth done and still at zero. I didn't mention this, but if you look at the top right of your screen during the air execution phase, it actually simulates the day and the night of each day of the seven day week. So right now it's on day five of the week, day, day six, 
uh, etc., and, and cycles through all of those and executes um, each operation as they fall within that. And now that it's done with the air execution phase, now it's going to begin its ground movement phase. And here's where we get to see if there's counterattacks, if they try to break through any of our lines, um, and overall just see how they respond to the work we had done just moments ago. So this is just a supply operation uh, right here. Just delivering freight. Again, doing the same thing we did just at the end of our turn, right? Just trying to get some supplies to some of their units. And this, this honestly is more of a worthwhile risk for them because you see all of these missions are going to Stalingrad where clearly all of those units are out of supply. And this is a very historical move by the Germans here. Um, in the historical sense, they did sit there and um, I think it was Goring said the, the Luftwaffe can supply the entire army via uh, airdrops, which was just an absurd claim. They, they never came anywhere close to it. Um, and here they're counterattacking us. We had actually moved up that unit to try to cut off that panzer division, and look, we've held. See, you see, they've they've used their forces to try to break through and to rescue that panzer division, and they've failed. Oh, right, right as I say that. So here, this time in the attack, they included the panzer division, and they were successful. And we've also lost that battle quite handily, I might add. But for the most part, most most of our lines here are holding. I'm, I'm really encouraged by some of these results that we're seeing flash up on the screen. I think we're doing quite well from what I've seen. We are only 15% through their ground movement phase, so perhaps I should shut up before I get ahead of myself. Let's see. And now this is action north near Leningrad, and we held, thankfully. Um... But this time, we surrendered. And this was that fortified region where we had actually withdrawn our infantry division. Um, here, they tried to counter uh, our forces as, remember, we're trying to close in on this pocket against them. So for the most part, we're holding, we've lost that fortified division, but I'm not sure they were even able to move into it. So hopefully, again, we can get these forces to wrap it around behind Leningrad in time to, uh, to to cut them off or force them to retreat so they don't get cut off. Right? Just because we can maneuver behind them doesn't necessarily mean the enemy will let that happen. They may say, yeah, it's not worth dying on this hill. We're going to retreat to, to fight another day. Um, quite unfortunately, uh, for the fighting men of the war, that was rarely the orders of their command during this front. Oh, well we've now had two battles back to back where our forces have retreated, so that's a little discouraging. But we held there. And we held again. Look at that. This time we did not hold. Oh, we routed and we retreated a unit. And we retreated there. Did they break through? It looks like they may have broken through, actually, uh, to that unit that we had surrounded. That's... that's too bad. Well, e even if they manage, which I'm going to be surprised if they still manage to do so, but even if they manage to rescue this unit, don't forget these units up here. This is still a, a total of, I think it was, um, five divisions that we've completely encircled that they have no chance of rescuing. Um, and just taking five divisions out of their pool to fight against us is a, a huge victory within itself. Now their turn's about wrapped up, just going through the final phases of rail repair and other um, actions, and then that will be the end of the turn. Couple more supply drops, it looks like. Yes, yeah, so you see they're trying to supply that unit that's cut off there. 
So even though they broke through the line, they recognize they're still not going to get enough freight to it, so they're trying to do supply drops. They are investing a lot of aircraft to resupply that one division. My goodness, look at this. Lost five just in that one run. All right. So that is the end of the Germans' turn. It's now simulating our logistics phase as the Soviets. We will do a quick recap of the um, turn summary, and we will look at any relevant news events, and then we'll call this episode to a close. So let's wait and see how that turn summary looks. I'm, I'm hopeful that we have four straight turns here at the end of this of improved supply situation for our units, but that might be too much to ask for. I... I worry that we might actually see that the number of units with supply situations deteriorating may have gone up during this turn, if for no other reason than the fact that this is now two straight turns of our forces being involved in blizzard-like conditions across the front line. It's difficult to effectively supply an army in that situation, regardless of how uh, used to the weather you may be as the um, defenders of the land. Still going through and wrapping up the logistics phase. And here we go. Quick save. All right, turn summary. Uh, for about the fourth turn in a row, we've seen about 60,000 in losses. We've averaged between 50 and 65,000. 1,100 guns, 433 armored fighting vehicles, which again feels a little high. Aircraft at 71, considering we weren't actually running or dictating any um, air missions, that feels a little high, but I think most of them were due to the AI trying to do um, supply freight drops. Our order of battle changes, we see that on the map we find ourselves with 83,000 more men, and you compare that to the axis, look at this. So that's, that is a net swing of 110,000 men at least. Uh, they've lost 30,000, we've gained 80,000. Guns, we've had a total loss of 1,100. Guns are interesting. We might have to look at this in, in the deep dive we do into metrics and production because it feels like guns is kind of where we consistently are getting ourselves hurt. We've lost 142 um, armored fighting vehicles as a net change. So even though we lost 433, uh, we produced enough and we had enough come in through supply that we only lost on the map 142. Airframes, we're actually positive 238, which I think is great news. Logistics, the numbers of everything we've received. Okay, so look, look at this, our supply situation by combat unit alerts. For the number on low supply, it increased by three units. Um, which is effectively just staying flat in terms of that supply situation. So that's not too bad. What did grow, though, is the number of units that are under strength, which is less than 65%. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that grew. Isolated units looks like it's actually gone by, down by two. So that's good news. Now let's take a look at news that have happened in the last turn. There's just one news article, and this is just highlighting uh, the... the uh, partisans in the German-occupied territory, um, they've increased their attacks um, in many of the regions. So that has simply continued to be an escalation turn after turn. And that brings this episode to a close. As always, want to thank you so much for your time to go through and watch these episodes and learn this game with me. I do hope you enjoy them. If you have any questions or feedback for the videos, please drop them in the comments and I'll be sure to reply or try to address uh, anything you may be raising. And if you'd be so kind, any type of like or subscribe to the channel uh, certainly helps in making sure that this game and this ease of access we're trying to take of approach to the game becomes more and more visible uh, so it can gain a little bit more support. So have yourselves a great day, strategy gamers and we'll see you in the next episode.